Hello, today I'm going to read you a story. It's a little book and it's called Millie, Molly, Mandy's Family. And it's a little book that when I was a very little girl, my mummy, my mummy used to read it to me quite a lot. So I thought I'd read the first one to you. And it's, you see, I've got some friends with me today. They're going to listen as well. And its first one's called Millie, Molly, Mandy Goes Errands and Shopping. Once upon a time, there was a little girl. She had a father and a mother and a grandpa and a grandma and an uncle and an auntie. And they all lived together in a nice white cottage with a thatched roof. This little girl had short hair and short legs and short frocks, pink and white striped cotton in summer and red serge in winter. But her name wasn't short at all. It was Millicent Margaret Amanda. But father and mother and grandpa and grandma and uncle and auntie couldn't very well call out Millicent Margaret Amanda every time they wanted her, so they shortened it to Millie Molly Mandy, which is quite easy to say. Now everyone in the nice little white cottage with the thatched roof had some particular job to do, even Millie Molly Mandy. Father grew vegetables in the big garden by the cottage. Mother cooked the dinners and did the washing. Grandpa took the vegetables to market in his little pony cart. Grandma knitted socks and mittens and nice warm willies, woolies for them all. Uncle kept cows to give them milk and eggs to give them and chickens to give them eggs. Auntie sewed frocks and shirts for them and did the sweeping and dusting. And Millie Molly Mandy? What did she do? Well, Millie Molly Mandy's legs were short, as I've told you, but they were very lively, just right for running errands. So Millie Molly Mandy was quite busy, fetching and carrying things and taking messages. Now this book hasn't got very many pictures in it. There's a little one there, let's do it this side, of Millie Molly Mandy running along the road to do her messages. One fine day, Millie, Mo Millie Molly Mandy was in the garden playing with Toby the dog when father poked his head out from the other side of a big row of beans and said, Millie Molly Mandy, run down to Mr Mogg's cottage and ask for the trowel he borrowed from me. So Millie Molly Mandy said, yes, father, and ran in to get her hat. At the kitchen door was mother with a basket of eggs in her hand. And when she saw Millie Molly Mandy, she said, Millie Molly Mandy, run down to Mrs Mogg's and give her these eggs. She's got visitors. So Millie Molly Mandy said, yes, mother, and took the basket. Trial for father, eggs for mother, she thought for herself. Then Grandpa came up and said, Millie Molly Mandy, please get me a ball of string from Miss Muggins' shop. Here's a penny. So Millie Molly Mandy said, yes, Grandpa, and took the penny, thinking to herself, trial for father, eggs for mother, string for Grandpa. As she passed to the kitchen, Grandma, who was sitting in her armchair knitting, said, Millie Molly Mandy, will you get me a skein of red wool? Here's a sixpence. So Millie Molly Mandy said, yes, Grandma, and took the sixpence. Trial for father, eggs for mother, string for Grandpa. Red wool for Grandma, she whispered over to herself. As she went up the passage, Uncle came striding up in a hurry. <gasps> Millie Molly Mandy said, Uncle, run like a good girl to Mr Blunt's shop and tell him I'm waiting for the chicken feed he promised to send. So Millie Molly Mandy said, yes, Uncle, and thought to herself, trial for father, eggs for mother, string for grandpa, red wool for grandma, chicken feed for Uncle. As she got, off, got her hat off the peg, Auntie called from the parlour where she was dusting. Is that Millie Molly Mandy? Will you get me a packet of needles, dear? Here's a penny. So Millie Molly Mandy said, yes, auntie, and took the penny, thinking to herself, trial for father, eggs for mother, string for grandpa, red wool for grandma, chicken feet for uncle, needles for auntie. And I do hope there won't be anything more. There's a picture of them all. Let's do it this side again. There you are. You can see them all. I can't see from here which is which. Oh, grandpa and grandma, then, then dad. No, then uncle, then auntie, then daddy, then mummy. And then Millie Molly Mandy. Turn the page. But there was nothing else, so Millie Molly Mandy started out down the path. When she came to the gate, Toby the dog capered up, looking very excited at the thought of a walk. But Millie Molly Mandy eyed him solemnly and said, Trial for father, eggs for mother, string for grandpa, red wool for grandma, chicken feet for uncle, auntie, needles for auntie. 
No, Toby, you mustn't come now. I've too much to think about. I promise to take you for a walk when I come back. So she left Toby on the other side of the gate and set off down the road with the basket and the pennies and the sixpence. Presently, she met a little friend and the little friend said, Hello, Millie Molly Mandy, I've got a new seesaw. Do come on it with me. But Millie Molly Mandy looked at her solemnly and said, Trial for father, eggs for mother, string for grandpa, red wool for grandma, chicken feet for uncle, needles for auntie. No, Susan, I can't come now, I'm busy, but I'd like to come when I get back, after I've taken Toby for a walk. So Millie Molly Mandy went on her way with the basket and the pennies and the sixpence. Soon she came to the Moggs' cottage. Please, Mrs Moggs, can I have the trowel for father? And here are some eggs from mother, she said. Mrs, Mrs Moggs was very much obliged was very much obliged indeed for the eggs and fetched the trowel and a piece of seed cake for Millie Molly Mandy's own self. And Millie Molly Mandy went on her way with the empty basket. Next she came to Miss Muggins' little shop. Please, Miss Muggins, can I have a ball of string for Grandpa and a skein of red wool for Grandma? So Miss Muggins put the string and the wool into Millie Molly Mandy's basket and took a penny and a sixpence in exchange. So that left Millie Molly Mandy with one penny. And Millie Molly Mandy couldn't remember what that penny was for. Sweetest, perhaps, said Miss Muggins, glancing at the row of glass bottles on the shelf. But Millie Molly Mandy shook her head. No, she says, and it can't be chicken feed for Uncle, because that would cost more than a penny. Only I haven't got to pay for it. It must be sweetest, said Miss Muggins. No, said Miss Molly, Millie Molly Mandy. But I'll remember soon. Good morning, Miss Muggins. So Millie Molly Mandy went on to Mr Blunt's and gave him Uncle's message. And then she sat down on the doorstep and thought what that penny could be for. And she couldn't remember. But she remembered one thing. It's for Auntie, she thought, and I love Auntie. And she thought for just a little while longer. Then suddenly she sprang up and went back to Miss Muggins' shop. I've remembered, she said, it's needles for Auntie. So Miss Muggins put the packet of needles into the basket and took the penny and Millie Molly Mandy set off for home. That's a good little messenger to remember all those things, said Mother when she got there. They were just going to begin dinner. I thought you were only going with my eggs. She went for my trowel, said Father. And my string, said Grandpa. And my wool, said Grandma. And my chicken feet, said Uncle. And my needles, said Auntie. Then they all laughed. And Grandpa, feeling in his pocket, said, Well, here's another errand for you. Go and get yourself some sweeties. So after dinner, Toby had a nice walk and his mistress got her sweets. And then Millie Molly Mandy and his little friend Susan had a lovely time on the seesaw, chatting and eating raspberry drops and feeling very happy and contented indeed. And there they are on the seesaw. And that's the end of that little story. Now we're going to say goodbye. Say goodbye, bears. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. See you again soon.